How's everyone doing, man? We are continuing on. Got some more stuff to get to, y'all. More fun, more happiness. Let's do it. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. We are back at you again today for another reaction video. And uh, today we are going to be uh, closing out uh, the stand up comedy special with Matt Rife titled Only Fans. It's going to be part five, the finale. Yes, that's what it is. And uh, you know what? It, it's just been a funny special. You know, I, I, I'm a big, huge fan of comedy, always have been. And there's nothing like a good special from front to end where you just got so much stuff that you might agree with and even not agree with. But overall, you're having fun listening to it and you're laughing your ass off. That's the whole point of this whole thing, isn't it? Isn't it, though? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, we're going to finish this one out today. And uh, before I continue on, I just want to say that um, just a shout out to um, uh, Ace. Uh, this is um, Hold on. Let me make sure I get this right because sometimes I mess things up. But uh, this one uh, channel who always puts the mashup videos together, he uh, put the um, the MILF and Cookies bit on um, in a mashup video, and uh, one of my video was in it. And uh, he always does that for me with uh, videos that he uh, makes. Ace and Black, yes, I didn't want to mess up his name. Shout out to Ace and Black for uh, putting that uh, bit of mine in with his mashup video. I appreciate you, big man, and uh, keep doing your thing. I'm going to put his... Um, his channel in the, the description so you guys can see his work he does very good work by the way didn't so let me just say that but uh yes just like i said we are continuing on with uh, matt rife only fans part five of this stand-up comedy special and if you like this reaction please put the like button for me one time subscribe to the channel ring that bell and uh leave a nice comment for your boy constructive critiques leave a nice suggestion or request and I throw a couple jabs jokes and singers at me friendly dialogue no drama here all right you guys know the deal so yeah i'm ready to close this one out let's see what he's talking about uh this one is about just under 10 minutes uh the other bits have been like 13 14 something like that if i remember right but uh yeah we're gonna finish it uh we're gonna finish it out let's go ahead and do this matt rife with only fans part five of this stand-up comedy special the finale right here on eddie b tv man welcome back let's have some more fun and here we go Let's do it. And this was such an uncomfortable situation because white people love to be offended for other people. It's our favorite extracurricular activity okay. to be like, oh, oh, did you, did you, did you see? They want you to be upset about stuff you didn't, you weren't even initial, initially upset about. White people are like yeah. PC gladiators. Just, are you not outraged? <laughs> Not really. I wasn't. <laughs> now I am. <laughs> and again, this is a very tough position to be put in because white people have ruined every excuse in the book to get out of being called racist. They ruined all of them. And fortunately, but unfortunately, I fit a massive cliche. If you or anybody watching were to take the slightest glimpse into my life. You wouldn't have to look far at all. You would see that all of my friends are black. All of them. That's one. That's, there, there's others, I swear. <laughs> all of them are black. I have one white friend and he's Russian. His name is Vladislav. And I don't, I don't know how much y'all know about Russians, but they're the black people of white people, okay? They're so dope. <laughs> So, <laughs> That's a nice to my to naivety, I'm trying to state my case to these strangers online who don't know who I am or know anything about me. Because from my perspective, I'm like, no, like, what, what are you talking about? I, I'm not racist. If you look at the people who I hold closest in my life, the people who mean more to me than my actual blood family, the people I love most and would probably fucking die for, you would see that – they're black. Like what I did was obviously stupid and wrong, but I didn't mean anything malicious by it. I would never in my fucking life mean anybody any hate or harm based on the color of their skin. That's outrageous to me. And the most frustrating thing about the entire experience in arguing with these people online was that there's still people who don't believe me. This is people right now, I'm sure, are watching being like, this is just another white dude trying to get out of another sticky situation. <laughs> and I understand that. But at the same time, I also don't have to convince you of a single fucking thing. 
I facts, facts. I know who I am. I know I'm not racist. I know how many times I've jacked off the Queen Latifah's beauty shop. <laughs> <laughs> y'all seen it? Oh, y'all sleeping, man. That shit is a classic. They so goddamn fine in that movie. Oh. Whew. So. All right. All this right. is when the conversation got really interesting because the problem shifted subjects. The issue started with a stupid mistake I made when I was 15 years old, and it shifted to white people now being uncomfortable with my comfortability with black people. Like they were, they were very uncomfortable with it. They were saying outrageous shit. They would be like, uh, oh, I bet you hang out with so many black people so that you can justify saying racist shit like that. For real? That doesn't That's really how you work. think racism and discrimination works? No. All right, bet. So if I hate gay people, I'm out here sucking so much dick <laughs> just so I can be like, oh, these homos are disgusting. Am I right? I'm not. Oh, my God. That's not how racism and discrimination works. That's real. That's real. I wouldn't real. put myself in that situation. But they kept going. They got more and more ignorant. They're like, oh, why do you hang out with so many black people then, huh? What do you want to be black? Fucking a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it's so much cooler some of the time, okay? Every white person wishes they were black a little bit. Any white person who says they don't is a fucking liar or a cop. Okay, do not believe that <laughs> for even a second, okay? But the silver lining of all of this is it made me do so much reflecting. Like, things that I had never had to put any thought into because they were such first nature to me, I actually thought about. Like, I had never thought about why all of my friends are black. I had never thought about why I'm so comfortable with black people or why I appreciate black people so much. So I did a lot of self-reflecting on it and the conclusion I came to is that nobody goes through more shit and still enjoys life to the fullest more than black people. Nobody. It's so impressive to me. And it's such a beautiful way to live your life because everybody's going to go through shit, but not everybody can bounce back and still enjoy shit to the fullest. And I think it's an absolutely incredible way to live. This is going to seem so dramatic, but I need you guys to take it into consideration. Do you have any idea what it takes to have this country literally built on your fucking back to this day still have to fight to be treated like a decent human being and still have time to write a better version of the happy birthday song? <laughs> have y'all heard it? That shit's incredible. They got a Drake uh, verse on there. It's incredible. Step your shit up, white people. You had such a head start. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. At its simplest form, it just comes down to common interest and common opinion. The people who you have in common, interest and opinion, those are the people you surround yourself with. Those are your real friends, those are your real family. The world should not be split into like, oh, white people do this, black people do this. If you're trying to do something another culture does, you're trying to do something that you're not. Like that, that divides us, that does not bring us together. And it doesn't even need to be so cut and dry. It goes through all aspects of life. Comedy is like that. I'm supposed to come up here say some relatable shit that y'all probably kind of already thought about. We make it funny, now we have that bond together, right? But there's still that judgment until we have that bond. Like every time I walk on stage, every dude watching is like, mm-mm. Absolutely not, I ain't got nothing in common with this dude. He got bangs. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not gonna think he's funny. But as soon as I come up here and say some relatable shit that we can agree on, like, who in here like big titties? <laughs> All those dudes are like, well, let's give them a chance. You see, <laughs> see what these titties are talking about. Because <laughs> we're not that fucking different, man. Stop uh, dividing people just because you're uneducated or inexperienced. Okay? That's why you're uncomfortable. That's why you come across as so fucking corny. And that's why you're not invited to the cookout. <laughs> See y'all at the cookout. I'll bring the potato salad. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'll, 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 I'll bring chairs. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. My name is Matt Rife. All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Yes. You guys are fantastic. Yes. Get home safe, please.
So how do you feel now that you self-produced your first stand-up special? So I would say this is one that uh, sounds so depressing. It's one of the few things in my career I'm proud of. Um, wasn't TRL. Wasn't the challenge. Wild Out didn't cut it. Sorry, Black Coalition, but I had a terrible time. <laughs> I'm happy for everybody who made it happen because we did this with fucking no budget at all the camera crew that's around you guys are so fucking talented to work on jobs that i will probably never book in my life so the fact that they were friends of mine that wanted to help out with this um the the sound team the set design like we did all of this shit there was no like official production team involved in it um movie magic you guys this is how you guys should see porn sets <laughs> All right, that was nice. Uh, one more time, we'll go out to the beat. Somebody make a song to this beat, man. It's nice. Right, that is the end of that one. Well, round of applause, Matt Reif with OnlyFans, his stand-up comedy special, man. Wow. Well, <laughs> very, very funny. Um, very talented dude, man. Um, the first uh, taste that I got of him was the uh, the milk and cookies bit, like I said. And uh, it was just crowd work at the time, and I didn't really know his range. And then seeing this, man, he really does have his act together, man. And uh, can't wait to get to the next special from him, or even at the very least the next bit. Um, I heard that there was a, uh, a follow-up bit to that Milf and Cookies thing, but I don't know exactly, um, when I'll get to that one. I don't even know what it's about or what it entails, really. I just heard that it was a follow-up. Uh, but anyway, uh, great, great job, Matt Reif, man. I think you were a funny-ass dude, man. I, I think that you, you kept it 100 on a lot of things. And uh, you opened up a lot about a lot of other things too, and uh, you knew how to make shit funny. As far as the ending bit, I do gotta I do gotta push back a little bit because, like I said before in the past, I was raised by a black man, and this black man uh, did not, you know, make um, struggle, you know, a thing that he expressed to me in that way of him being black, you know, because my grandfather was a black man. He was from Illinois. Uh, Ducorn, Illinois, if I'm if I'm um, remembering that right, and uh, I, I've been on vacation with my family back in the day to Gary, Indiana, Ducorn, Illinois, and met all my family there. And you know, he he always never preached about he he never preached about racism at all. He's just like you act right, you handle your business, man. All that other stuff doesn't matter, you know. And if you're somebody that probably said stuff the way he said them then a lot of people like to label black, certain black men like sellouts and Uncle Toms and stuff like that just because they don't, you know, see things the same way that a lot of other black people see them. You know, there's been a lot of drama, a lot of nonsense. We're dealing with racism and way back in the slavery days and all that stuff. Is that There's been a lot of stuff that's going on. But, you know, can anybody really say anything like that now? Can really anyone say that? You know, there's a lot of stuff that still goes down. But, you know, few and far in between, and yet black people aren't the only ones that go through stuff, too. Mexican, uh, Mexican people go through stuff, too. You know, there's also a lot of um, uh, Middle Eastern people that go through some things here in America as well. It's like, you know, it's not, you know, isolated to one race. You know, humans go through some stuff, you know. So I'm not pushing back too much, man. I know that he probably has his own perspective on it, and I admire that, whatever. But, you know, just not trying to make that, you know, um, the main point of me hanging out with anyone for a racial reason or anything like that. My best friends, my two of my best male friends is a black dude and a white dude. C-Dev, CEO, and B-Rob, you know what I mean? And you guys seen them both on the channel and we have two different connections and it just, it didn't happen because they were white or black. It just happened because they was cool people to me and in some ways I was cool people to them. And that's how we linked. I didn't think about race pertaining to anything like that. And I think people need to graduate to that a lot more. Um, but as far as what he said about white people getting offended, you know, for other people, it's an annoying thing that a lot of uh, white people do, 
it, it, it's, it doesn't need to happen. You don't need to be offended for anybody else. It's not really your job. If something happens to you that, you know, you're dealing with in life or whatever that you need to address and that you're offended by, okay, fine, do that. Make sure it's something that you're dealing with and not something that someone else is dealing with because you can't fight nobody else's battles. You can only fight your own. That's just how that goes. But uh, like I said, very funny bit. Another round of applause for Matt Rife, man. You're a funny ass dude. And um, uh, somebody let me know. I'll probably check it out myself anyway, but just so I don't forget, someone let me know what special uh, comes after this one because I heard he has a few more out there. And uh, just let me know what's the next one on the list and maybe I can get to it in the future. Or maybe at least get to a couple bits from it. Because I know I'm going to do another uh, stand-up special from another comedian soon as uh, we're done with this one. And uh, we're going to have some more fun with that. So, yeah, man. Very funny special. Matt Rife, you are a funny-ass dude, man. And I can't wait to see more from you. And uh, big ups to you, man. Can't wait to get into more. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there one more time. Matt Rife with uh, OnlyFans. Uh, part 5, the finale of the stand-up comedy special. And if you like that reaction, please put on the like button for me one more time. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, as always, leave a nice comment for your boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and I throw a couple jabs, jokes, and zingers at me. Friendly dialogue, no drama here, all right? Please and thank you for always remembering. And also, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Thank you one more time to Miss Ema Catherine Meyer for suggesting the stand-up special to us. I had a lot of fun watching it and um, can't wait to get into something else that you got on your channel for me to get to. Once again, thank you so much. So, yeah, man, it's going to be Eddie B. TV wrapping this one up. One more again here. Another stand-up comedy special in the books, man. I'm glad that I actually started doing entire specials, you know. I mean... I've heard there uh, there's a couple other channels out there that do things in a, in a little bit of a different light. They watch the whole thing, then they just break it up into parts. That's a good idea. I don't think I could really um, uh, sit here and do a whole special. Maybe I could, maybe I couldn't. I don't know. Kind of gets in the way of how I do rebuttals at the end of each bit or whatever, but who knows? We'll, we'll probably tackle that if we want to. If not, then you'll obviously see me keep doing the same stuff I've been doing. So, uh, yeah, man, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank, uh, thank you guys for always, you know, um, providing me with these suggestions. And, uh, you know, we can continue to have fun with these uh, with these comedy bits and specials and uh, get to know each other a little bit more. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that don't agree with things that I have to say, and that's fine. As long as you don't come on my, on my channel and on the comments talking mad shit or nothing like that, then I don't got to just delete your comments and just... <sighs> keep my sanity in check <laughs> yeah that's what we're here to do have fun not cause any drama like i said you know but some people still don't get the point they still always have to chime in with their bullshit and uh i'm just gonna woosah on that <laughs> so yeah thank y'all for tuning in one more time and until next reaction love and appreciate y'all peace